Hey, this is Osborne coming back to you with another video for American History North Carolina Final Exam Review. Today we're looking at the Progressive Era from 1890 to 1917. Okay, so make sure that as you watch the video that you answer the guided questions that are provided. It's okay if you need to pause or rewatch the video in order to answer some of the guided questions. At the end of the video, make sure that you summarize in paragraph form the main points of the video using the vocabulary words provided to you on your WSQ. Okay, mainly these words are coming from bolded and underlined words from the video. Also finish by asking one question. This question can either be something that you're still confused about, a general question, or a question that you think that would be a good discussion question for the class. So the two questions that we're looking at to answer in your summary um, is how did increasing populations of immigrants change urban communities? And then what kind of reforms did progressive reformers focus on? So prior to 1890, most immigrants came from Britain or Western Europe. Okay, So mainly these people are coming from um, the Brit British Isles, like that's where the first Americans came from. France is another one. Um, Netherlands. But by about 1890, these new immigrants were mainly coming from southern and eastern Europe, right? So Italy, Russia, Poland, Austria, Hungary, Germany, okay? And they're settling primarily in large cities in the Northeast and the Midwest. The Germans are mainly going to travel to the Midwest to become farmers, okay? And so they came through Ellis Island, which is an immigration station in New York City. Okay, on the West Coast, there's also a group of immigrants coming through. Um, they're going to be Asian immigrants from China and Japan, and they're also looking for economic opportunity. They come through an immigration station called Angel Island. Okay, and both of these groups are going to end up experiencing discrimination from nativists. Okay, and these nativists are people who just didn't like immigrants. They opposed them. They didn't want them to come into the United States. Okay? And mainly, they oppose them because they're culturally going to be really different from the Americans that are already there. Okay? The Americans that are already there are mainly going to be Protestant. Many of these immigrants are going to be Catholic. They didn't represent the same cultural values that the previous Americans had. But in addition to this, these immigrants were mainly coming for jobs. Okay, and so they felt like these immigrants were going to come and take away their jobs because they're willing to work for lower wages than the other Americans were. So progressive reformers are primarily going to be middle class reformers and they're going to be concerned with urban and consumer issues. So they're going to want to protect immigrants, protect consumers who are buying things from big, big businesses, okay, because they felt like the big businesses were um, bad and that they were taking advantage of consumers, okay. They also think that the government should be used to aid the poor and other social issues. Welfare as we know it did not exist yet, okay. There's three main goals of progressivism. One. They wanted to make the government more democratic through the direct election of senators and also giving women the right to vote, okay? Whenever you see the word suffrage, always think of the right to vote, okay? They also wanted to reform the local governments and get rid of political machines or otherwise known as political bosses through three um, key main ideas that were called initiative, recall, and referendum, and that would make the um, local government more responsive to public opinion, okay? So initiative was a bill that came from the American people. Recall is when they recalled or got um, took a, a person out of office that they had um, voted into office because they didn't think that person was very good. And then referendum is adding on through voters, adding on to bills that had already been passed. Okay. And then lastly, they wanted to regulate big businesses by ending child labor, preventing trust and monopolies. And again, those trust and monopolies were going to be these big businesses that took advantage of the whole area and kind of beat out their smaller uh, businesses for their business. And then also ensured food and drug safety. Okay. There's going to be a couple of events that occur um, during the progressive era that makes people kind of concerned about what's going into their food and then what's going into their medicine. Okay, and these progressives are really successful, okay, they get four different amendments passed. The 16th Amendment gives Congress the power to collect taxes on income, what we call the income tax. The 17th Amendment allows for the direct election of senators. Previously, senators had been voted in um, by the state legislatures, and the people voted for the state legislatures, and they just kind of hoped that the American people would um, vote well. Okay, and the 18th Amendment forbids the sale, manufacture, and transportation of alcohol. And this led us up to a period called Prohibition, when essentially alcohol was prohibited from being a part of the American life. Okay, and the 19th Amendment is the last one, and it granted women the right to vote. It's not passed until 1920. The Pur Pure Food and Drug Act 
required ingredients in various food and drugs to be made known to consumers, preventing unsanitary or dangerous food and drugs. Okay, and this act was actually passed after the book The Jungle was released by Upton Sinclair. Okay, and The Jungle kind of recounted what was occurring in the meatpacking industry where there was rats and rat feces and poison all being um, put into the ground beef that was being produced. And this was created a really concerning environment for the American consumers. Muckrakers are investigative reporters that promoted these social and political reforms because they sought to bring the corruption or rake out the corruption um, into the light and make people aware of the um, urban problems that were happening. They were really, really critical of the government, but also of those robber barons, as they called them. Okay, there's three main muckrakers that you might be tested on. Upton Sinclair wrote the novel The Jungle. Again, that's talking about the meatpacking industry and ends up leading to the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act that makes it more known what is in our food, but also what is in our drugs. Okay, Jacob Reese is a journalist and photographer in New York City. Um, you might know him for some of the pictures that you have seen in class um, of immigrants living in very poor tenements. Okay, and he wrote the book, How the Other Half Lives, describing the other half of America and how they lived in the urban areas okay, in those tenements. Ida Tarbell is the leading woman in the muckraking movement, and she is going to be really highly critical of industrial leader Rockefeller um, in her book um, on Standard Oil. Two progressive presidents are Theodore Roosevelt, also known as Teddy Roosevelt, and Woodrow Wilson. Okay, Theodore Roosevelt promoted a square deal for labor because he had mediated the coal strike of 1902, saying that the coal strike was a square deal both for the, the, um, the business leaders but also for the workers. Okay? He addressed also the public concerns about the conservation of natural resources. He is the main president who created the National Park Service. Okay? He also addresses the issues of monopolies of the railroad industry, um, as well as a couple other different reforms. Okay? Wilson is also going to address the concerns of citizens on high tariffs, and tariffs are taxes on um, imported goods. Okay? And he's going to also um, talk about trust, and banking issues. But after World War I begins, Woodrow Wilson's main concern is going to be with keeping um, the American people safe. Jane Addams is also one of the best known revo reformers because she founded Hull House. And Hull House is going to be well known for helping urban poor, mainly immigrants, by educating them on different American practices, how to be a better American. They're criticized because they kind of Americanized immigrants. They didn't really want them to keep their cultural practices. But they also provided them some housing and social events. Now, when women were looking for the right to vote, a group of women called the Suffragettes formed. Okay, and the Suffragettes worked to ensure women's right to vote and greater equality for women. One of the most uh, best known suffragettes was Alice Paul, who was a militant suffragette. She chained herself to the White House, um, hoping that the 19th Amendment would be passed, which it won't be passed until after World War I in 1920, after women had kind of served in different roles that was supported the American government during World War I. Okay? Another big issue that is also going to be very important to women is the temperance movement. Okay, and the temperance movement advocates for the moderation of alcohol. Women pretty much are going to want to get rid of alcohol altogether. Okay, women, they thought that alcohol led to the beating of people's wives, it led to the mistreatment of children, and also to the breakup of families. Okay, and so women created the Women's Christian Temperance Union, or the WCTU, and they sought to improve society by eliminating alcohol for the safety of women and children. And they ultimately are going to be successful in doing this with the passage of the 18th Amendment. Um, another main African-American leader that kind of came up um, in opposition to Booker T. Washington is W.E.B. Du Bois. Okay, and W.E.B. Du Bois founds the National Association for the in Advancement of Colored People, otherwise known as the NAACP. Okay? And the NAACP advocates for full political, economic, and social equality for black Americans. From 1909 all the way through the Civil Rights era into today, the NAACP is going to be an influential organization working on behalf of black Americans. Okay? So W.E.B. Du Bois advocates for the talented tenth. 
Okay, he believes that this talented tenth, the top ten percent of African Americans in society, would come become influential um, and get getting involved in social change. Okay, he opposed Booker T. Washington. He wanted integration, not separatism. He didn't want African Americans to have to be separate um, in society, have to be separate economically. Okay, and they used. Um, he used the NAACP to work to achieve equality and justice for blacks. All right, so we're at the end of the video, so make sure that you have answered all of the guided questions. If you missed a question, make sure that you watch the video again and go back and pause where you need to. If you feel like you have a good understanding of the video, go ahead and summarize it in paragraph form, the main points using the vocabulary given to you on your WSQ. If not, you need to go back and watch the video one more time. And then finish by asking one question, either a general question um, or another question that might um, be brought up by the class. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, if you need to go back and watch the video again, please make sure you do so. If not, be watching for the next set of videos.